So William, are you ready? Ready for what? <gasps> Another episode of Garden Time? No, the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, 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 where are you? William, I'm right here. Oh, well, that was quick. <laughs> Welcome to Garden Time. And if you don't know by now, it's the weekend before the big solar eclipse. So don't forget to have your specially approved sunglasses for the eclipse. Now, if you don't have the sunglasses, it's easy. Just don't look at the sun. Well, there is one thing you can watch, and it's Garden Time. And coming up on the show today, we are going to be showing you some plants that are really beautiful, even in late summer. We'll also be checking in on the peach harvest. But coming up first, the tips of the month with Jan McNeilan. Well, it is that time of the month again when we come out and talk to Jan McNeilan about yep. tips in the garden. And it's also kind of starting to become a harvest time for, for yeah, us in the Northwest. For a lot of, lot of crops, yeah. And you have a dehydrator, so mm -hmm. let's talk about that a bit. Well, there's, <clears throat> they're fairly inexpensive, and uh, this one I'm drying some figs wow. in here. And I can dry oranges, orange peel, in the winter when oranges are less expensive. You can make orange, dried orange peel, lemon peel, you can dry herbs, you can dry um, all sorts of different things. And there's a lot of, of, of fruit from the garden, like these figs, that mm -hmm. you could, they all easily dry, and that does a, a couple of things. First of all, dried fruit is good, but then it's great for, you know, packing it away for the Absolutely. winter. Absolutely. And then you don't have to can it or right. heat up your house. That's why I have it plugged in outside. Outside, yeah, very smart. Um, but, and then also there's trays that come with it that you can make fruit leather. Oh, nice. Um, or have some something else that you want to get a lot of air to it. And, you know, you can also dry strawberries in that. You can, <laughs> and, I, and I have. You can do like sun-dried tomatoes and dry tomatoes in here too. And so since strawberries have come and gone, there's still stuff we should do to the plants themselves Absolutely. This time in August, year. you cut your strawberries back da right down to the crown and fertilize, and oh. that's all, because now they're going to set their buds for next year for your fruit. And so that prepares. And then there's also some stuff about planting at this time of year because we've had some serious heat. Absolutely. But we're going to go into the greenhouse and you're going to give us some tips on that. I will. All right. Okay, so here we are in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are afraid to plant when it's really super hot out, but we still can. Just give us some of the best tips on doing that. Well, Normally, I don't have this much stuff in the greenhouse at this time of year, but uh -huh. we've got a family wedding here in a couple of weeks, and I bought a lot of stuff to put in, new in the garden, and it's been so hot. Yeah. So now it's cooling down a little bit, but um, so a lot, all of this, most of this is all going outside. But when you plant when it's hot, uh, you need to what's called mudding in, and you literally dig the planting hole uh, as deep as the plant itself with mm -hmm. the soil level and twice as wide and then you put uh, the hose in the in the hole before the plant and literally fill the hole with water okay and then pull your plant out of uh, the container which this one's not going to come very easily but anyway and get it out and then scratch the roots on the outside, if some things are going to be, especially sitting here for a long time, right, going right. to be root bound. So you want to score the roots uh, and just kind of open it up or butterfly it a little bit, put it in the hole, backfill it. Uh, you can put compost in. You don't need to do a lot of amending because most of the time the plants are fine. It's just water is what yeah, they're going to need yeah. the most. And then, of course, afterwards you would continue. Don't just Absolutely. stop with that. That <laughs> water won't do more. it and then wait till October or something is f for watering. You've got to continue to keep right. those plants moist, but at least they're going to be under a lot less stress if you plant them with the water. And then, you know, one of the things I've noticed in my own garden is a lot of notching on leaves. And I'm, I'm assuming that's root weevil. Is it that is, accurate? It is. And it's on everything yeah. this year. It's crazy. <laughs> it seems um, to be. And if it's a rhododendron, there's some things you can do and use tangle foot at the base of and keep branches from flopping on the ground uh, where they can crawl up and do the notching. But it's on everything. It's on perennials this year. Right. It's on evergreens it's on all sorts of stuff yeah 
And, and nothing really we can do about it right now. because There really the, isn't. Yeah. Nematodes are used sometimes for root weevil, but it, it takes it at the right time. Right, right. All right, well, there you have it, you know, so go out to your garden, enjoy it, and then we'll come back next month for even more tips. And Thank you so much, And these will Dan. be planted and by then. <laughs> they will. <laughs>
And the same principles that you use in this kind of design, you can also use in, in landscape and gardening design. Yes, and so mm -hmm. I would say our biggest word for this project is impact. Impact. We want to choose things that make an impact. We don't need 100,000 little pieces of decor right, in the right. house, but we want to choose things that um, really grab your eye. And the same for the, for the landscaping. Yeah. Little window boxes and bright flowers and things that are really going to... Really catches attention. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and speaking of purchasing, I am here with Carol, and you are the, the wonderful purchaser of all of this stuff at Garden Gallery yes. Ironworks. What is it that you think when you're going through your process for this specific endeavor, what goes through your mind in ordering? Well, I'm looking for, like she said, impact, things that will layer well. Right. So, because we don't want it to look like a dollhouse. Yeah. We just want it to look like a normal house that's scaled down. And so, just keep in mind scale, uh, different uses yeah. for the same thing. Like a tray might be hanging on a wall, and then when she's entertaining, boom, it's a tray. And that, that's the multi use of stuff exactly. in a smaller space. Perfect. Well, there you have it. Now, our next segment on this wonderful adventure is going to be the building of the house itself. So, thank you all for uh, joining me today, and we'll see you all again on the next segment. It is peach season and I'm at Bauman's Farm and Garden with Brian and Brian, you have so many things peachy here. Thank you so much for the fuzzy, fuzzy peach? peach. Fuzzy wuzzy. Fuzzy wuzzy. Yes. It's delicious. And really you have something for everybody in the drink selection. That's right. We've got lots of peach drinks. It's, it's peach season. It's going to be a very short, limited season oh. this year. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But okay. Before we get started, I, I figured it's been hot out when you get mm. something to drink. This is, um, so funny story. Um, this is what my parents used to serve us as kids. They Aww. call it peach fuzzy wuzzy. And the secret is, is that we leave the skin on in the drink. That's the fuzzy wuzzy. Oh, sure, sure. Um, but my parents always gave us a little bit, and then theirs was a little more doctored uh, uh, up. Oh, well, you know, William yes. would do that, too, to make it a little adult beverage, right? Well, and so <laughs> while you're here, I thought, um, you know, you guys have come out and seen our cider before, which has been a really fun adventure mm -hmm. for us. We have two different types of peach cider on tap at the farm right now as well, um, and it's made with our peaches. Nice, nice. So we have just a regular peach cider, and then we have a raspberry peach. Oh, lovely. And there's something new with Travel Oregon about ciders. There's an ale and cider tr um, trail that uh, Travel Salem has, where you can pick up a passport here at Bowman Farms or other participating locations, and then you go to each one, get a stamp. Fun. And then you get a prize at the end of it. That is nice, like a treasure hunt. Exactly. Like, yeah. Nice. Well, let's go and talk about some other peach delicacies at the other part of the store. All right, sounds good. Now, Brian, I think this is the bestest place to be in the store. This is the bakery. Uh, and my office is right around the corner. Oh. I smell this all day. <laughs> it drives me crazy. It's a good thing I'm running all the time. Uh, what do you have here? Oh, uh, the bakery is just making some wonderful items with the peaches that are coming in right now. Peach pound cake, mm. it's delicious. Of course, peach pies, peach turnovers. Um, uh, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, we need smell of vision again. It is lovely. So these are the beautiful peaches from your orchard. So right. They're the, beautiful. These are actually coming from an orchard about a mile from here, which is where my grandmother still lives on the farm that was started in 1895. Amazing. So um, it's kind of cool. Um, but I, I wanted to bring in for you one of the, um, this is what we pick our peaches in, okay. which is a little different. Yeah. But, you know, you come into stores and you hear about, don't squeeze the peaches. Right. Um, from the moment they're picked, we are very careful with them. Mm -hmm. Peaches are so delicate. Um, so they're in these, you know, kind of plastic tubs. They're only picked one layer thick. Um, these are literally, I just grabbed it off the truck coming right, in from right. the field today. Um, and then we sort them. And you'll see some of these big, beautiful peaches ready to go. It's so like, check and see if they're ripe. You always want to roll it over to the top. See how this is just a tinge of green? Okay. You'll want to let this sit on your counter for a day or two, just till it turns a nice golden, and then it's ready to go. Um, but you'll see a lot of times in the store um, a number two peach. And a lot of times, I mean, you can see the difference. This one's just quite a bit smaller. Correct. So we're going to put those in number twos. It's going to be a little cheaper than the great big number ones. Um, but a lot of times, that's all they are. It's just a little smaller, maybe a few blemishes on them. But just as delicious. Exactly. Just yeah. as delicious. And then you were also saying that it's going to be a really short season this year. Oh, my gosh. Um, with that rainy, yucky weather we had all spring, they just didn't get pollinated. I mean, oh. our crop is probably 40%, um, less than half of what it was last year. 
So it's going to be a short season. So now is the time to come down and get some fresh peaches. Yeah, and you really have some today. That's really wonderful. So yep. come in. You're open six days a week. You're not open on Sunday Correct. until the fall festival starts. Correct. Not till the end of September. Um, so right now it's Monday through Friday till six, and Saturday till five. And you know, it's I always say our location is our biggest attribute and our biggest attraction because it is off the beaten path. You do have to go um, take 99 just south of Woodburn and we're about a half a mile off the road outside of Woodburn. Uh, but still really easy to get here. So if you need those directions, go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the Bauman site. You can get those directions. You can get all the hours and what's available at the store. Really, right now, everything's really local. They have their Century Farm mm -hmm. is right around the store. Brian, thanks so much. Everything's Thank delicious. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save $5 on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good, deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Nestled in the oaks of the Willamette Valley is a nursery that is truly exceptional. At Out in the Garden Nursery, you will find a vast array of shade plants, ornamental grasses, and hardy perennials. Don't leave your garden in the dark this weekend. Shop us Saturday, Sunday, and Monday during the eclipse. We offer over 100 types of perennials. Plus, we offer the best in personal attention. Out in the Garden Nursery, where we grow great gardens one plant at a time. Enjoy a summer of art and color. Visit the Oregon Garden for Art in the Garden now through September 30th. See outstanding and inspired art that represents both traditional and modern styles carefully placed throughout the garden. See the combination of beautiful plants and great art as you stroll the gardens. Just pick up your map at the visitor center on your next visit. For details on Art in the Garden and a schedule of all our summer events, go to OregonGarden.org. Well, it is a great delight of mine to be here with Kirk, and we are at Seabright Gardens, and we're going to be talking today about wonderful blooming plants that are happening, and some that aren't even blooming at this late time of the summer, right? Yes, yes, ones that look great well, right now. Well, let's jump in. Well, yeah, sounds great. Uh, which one do you want to talk about? Why don't we do, this is beautiful. This, here, this is McFadden's Lace Fern. It's actually, uh, the Lace Fern is uh, native to the North Pacific Islands, like Hawaii. That's the closest islands. Wow. To, the, to us, but actually it's really hardy here in our gardens here in the Northwest. And um, it's an evergreen fern, but when it gets down to the single digits, it will burn the fronds off. But, but yeah, so, and then I'm off. assuming that it's not a runner so much as a clumper? Exactly, nice. yeah, clumps, yep. It's yeah, a nice clumper and nice texture and form to it, so. And then, yeah. you know, all of us know hostas because mm -hmm. we, we love to come out here and see so many. And this one oh, is yeah. quite large and beautiful. Yeah, this one, uh, it's really getting some yellow from the uh, from the summer heat on the edges. It's nice thick leaves. It's hard for the slugs to drill through this leaf. It's like leather. Nice. And uh, it's getting that nice yellow edge coming on from this sun and the summer heat. So. And there are hostas that bloom. I, I understand yes, that. Yes, absolutely. But, but yeah. this one either has it yet or still will in the future. But uh, even this the, is lovely. It just finished blooming, so I clipped the blooms clipped off right of off. it. Yeah, yeah it that's a, last month. There's right, there's that's one hosta here blooming now. Right that, there. Uh, this is a stained glass. It's a fragrant flowered one. And the nice thing about the fragrant flowered hostas is they put on a lot of new leaves in the summer months. They like really? the summer heat. The uh, origins, the genetic origins are from the subtropics down in southern China. And this is a leaf that came out in the winter. It has some winter dam uh, damage from the spring, from yeah. the hail. And 
So you can just take these leaves off because you've got all these nice new ones coming now that are that look a lot better than uh, the one that was damaged this spring. So beautiful. Yeah. I'm you know I'm falling more and more in love with dark foliage plants. This one is stunning. Yeah, this this hibiscus here it's 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 uh, nice because it has the dark the new the new growth is that dark maroon red, and um, the the older leaves get green, but the flowers are blooming now in the garden. They like the summer heat. It's a uh, Starry, starry night, this one, this variety here. And they really do, especially this variety of the hibiscus family, they really do bloom late in the year, don't yes, they? Yes, this is their peak right now. Nice. Right in the heat of summer, and they just love this, the summer heat. And I fell in love with this plant, Herc, yeah. from you having it here yeah, years yeah. and years ago. Yeah. Tell me about it. This is a Roscoe. It's cinnamon sticks because of the uh, nice cinnamon colored stem, uh, stems it has. But it, it doesn't really come up until late spring sometimes not even till June. This year it came up a little early for some reason, which is odd because we had such a cold, exactly. cool spring. So I was surprised to see it come up, but it, sometimes you think you lost in the garden and it comes up. Um, the bulbs, it's like the rhizomes are like a, kind of like a dahlia yeah. actually. And, um, but they, they come up late and then they start blooming now. Here's the blooms of this one. And it'll keep just throwing out, flushing out blooms until it gets cold. Late, late fall, so. And I have to tell you that mine made a lovely clump over about three years. It just kept clumping out bigger and bigger. It was such Great. a beautiful. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. Yeah, they handle uh, sun well to nearly full shade. Full shade, so, yep. yeah, yeah. And of course, we, we would be remiss to not mention this beautiful family. Yeah, the yeah, Arbutalons. Yeah. Yeah, the Arbutalons are great. They, they uh, start blooming here. Actually, they started blooming this spring, but they, they like the heat and they will continue blooming until, um, until the first hard frost. And you also have some wonderful thing happening today, don't you, here at the nursery? Yeah, the jewel box sale for Cascade Nursery Trail. Wonderful. There's six nurseries here, and we also have um, Pudding River wine cellars Ooh. that are here and, and a food vendor. So, so many reasons to come out exactly. and celebrate. It's huh? a great day to come down <laughs> here, yeah. Well, for more yeah. information, we always invite you to go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to their website, gather up all that information, and then come out and buy some wonderful late summer blooming plants for your garden. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. The fields are in bloom and looking beautiful. We welcome everyone to come visit us here at Swan Island Dahlias. Stop by Swan Island Dahlias in Canby and stroll the 40 acres of blooms. And don't forget the Dahlia Festival the last weekend in August and Labor Day weekend. During the festival, you can see over 400 cut flower displays, enjoy specialty foods, and see flower arranging demonstrations. Swan Island Dahlias is located in Canby, just minutes south of Portland. Come, come see us. It's summer clearance time at Standard TV and Appliance. Save up to 72% on closeouts, overstocks, floor models, and special purchases at Standard, including refrigerators and freezers, washers and dryers, ranges, wall ovens and cooktops, top brand dishwashers, beauty rest and memory foam mattresses, HD TVs and home theater. Plus, save up to 47% on display and closeout pro style appliances. Only while they last. Standard TV and Appliance. It's almost Oregon State Fair time, and I'm with Ken, and Ken, in years past, we've talked about actually bringing your vegetables to get judged at the fairgrounds, and that is so much fun. So once again, it's time to do that. Yes, it really is, and it's so easy to do because uh, people can bring their vegetables in and at the very last minute and uh, enter the competition. So really, the deadline, when is a deadline? The technical deadline for on the... Uh, internet is the 21st okay but uh, we are accepting 
um, vegetables and produce on the 24th. Ah, okay, so right before the, the fair starts. Right, and if someone hasn't registered, uh, we're pretty squishy about that. <laughs> they can they can bring it in and we'll register them at that time. Ah, and so what kind of things are you looking for? Tomatoes, pears, peaches? Or... Sure, when I, do, when I do presentations around the valley, I find out that everybody grows tomatoes. <laughs> that is true. So we have a big tomato category and we also have the most unusual tomato. Fun. And um, uh, we have youth and adult categories and uh, virtually any other produce that can be grown. We have some new categories this year because we found out that we had a, a had neglected a few things. For instance, rhubarb. Oh. Rhubarb was put in with herbs. Oh, no, that's not the right place to no, put it. No way. No. <laughs> so uh, we have a rhubarb category. That is so cool. be sure and look at the uh, website and, and see all the categories. Because people don't think, it's like we have so many great gardeners out there, and it's like, let's get some ribbons out there. And so people can come out and get some bragging rights. Absolutely. And there's absolutely no charge. Doesn't oh. cost a thing. Sure. Just uh, bring your stuff out, and we'll gladly accept it. Ah, and what else is going on at the fair? I know that there's a new stage out there. Yes, it's called uh, Explore Oregon State. And uh, all of the uh, presentations are geared towards exploring something in Oregon. That's fun. So we'll really get to be introduced to maybe something we haven't seen before. Absolutely. John Savage from uh, the uh, Straub... Uh, Environmental Center? That's the okay, one, yep. yes. Uh, he's going to be here talking about native plants. Fun. And uh, you know, people say, ask me quite often, well, what are the easiest plants to grow? Native plants. That is true, yep, they're right out there. And then yep. you're doing a presentation, what is that one about? Well, I'm gonna do a, a presentation on small space gardening and uh, virtually growing your garden on the patio. Yeah, and really that's so important now because a lot of people, they don't have that 40 acres anymore and so they do have a um, right. small space. Absolutely, and uh, during my presentations I tell people there is nothing that grows that you can't grow in a container. Ah, oh, that is true, so we need to remind them. Absolutely, and, and, and in fact I have some pictures of unusual container growth. <laughs> For instance, full-size trees. Oh, wow. In yeah. containers. Sure, you just have to make sure they're watered, right? Yep. and. Uh, the, the picture that I show most often is of the fourth floor of the Salem Hospital. <laughs> they have full-size trees growing in an arboretum. Ah, that is remarkable. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something to remember. So go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the website for the State Fair. Make sure that your vegetables are looking their best and get them entered in the fair to get your blue ribbon this year. Thanks so much. You, you bet. And come to Columbia Hall and uh, enjoy the presentations. Also, before I leave, we have an 1880 Oliver steam tractor. Fun. That, that's going to be incorporated in the, the presentation. Ah, so you have to see that historical tractor. Thanks so much. You bet, thank you. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And don't forget to wear your protective sunglasses for the solar eclipse and just be safe. And if you are still in the dark about the show today, we can always go to gardentime.tv and find out about all the great events that are happening this weekend. William and I thank you for watching and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.